Okay, tonight's webinar, we're going to be talking about percutaneous coronary intervention or PCI proceedings and how to code them. First, let's just talk a little bit about how you, oh, you don't, can't, you can't, guys can't even see my screen, can you? No, we can't see your screen. No. Okay. Tell me as soon as I start okay. to do that. Um, nope. We can see your link. All right, coders, let's start talking about percutaneous coronary intervention, which is abbreviated and most people refer to it as PCI. This is code series 92920 through 92979. These illustrations are basically just graphic depictions. This one is the balloon catheter. This one is the uninflated balloon. And this is actually just representing when the balloon has been inflated. So just to give you some, some of us are more visual learners than others. I wanna talk a little bit about how blood flows through your heart. This illustration is from page 210 of your 2020 CPT manual, and it does have arrows that direct you, but uh, if you wanna think on the fly, number one, I suggest that you have the pathway documented on this page in some of the empty space, and I have a couple of mnemonics that I use to remember how the, the pathway of the blood through the heart. Okay, what happens is blood returns to your body, from the body to your heart via the superior and inferior vena cava. It enters at the right atrium, and then from the right atrium, it flows through the tricuspid valve to the right ventricle. From the right ventricle, the blood passes through the pulmonary valve to the pulmonary artery, and from there it goes out to the lungs. The blood returns from the lungs via the pulmonary veins and enters the left atrium. From the left atrium, it passes through the bicuspid or mitral valve into the left ventricle. From the um, left ventricle, it passes through the aortic valve and then out via the aorta to the body's tissues. Now, a couple of things to remember here. Sometimes people get confused about the difference between artery, arteries and veins and which one controls which pathway. Easy thing to remember is that the arteries carry blood away from the heart. A for artery, A for away. And by default, that means the veins are how the blood returns. Um, but a couple of mnemonics to help you with the exact pathway. As it comes in, I said it returns via the superior and inferior vena cava, or cavi, I guess is the actual plural, enters the right atrium. From the right atrium, it flows through the tricuspid valve to the right ventricle. Then from the right ventricle, it goes to the pulmo pulmonary valve, to the pulmonary artery, and out to the lungs. Comes back via the pulmonary veins and enters the left atrium. From the left atrium, it passes through the bicuspid or mitral valve. That is actually just a valve that has two separate names. So don't think that there are two valves and there's an either or situation. It's one valve. Some people refer to it as bicuspid. Some people refer to it as mitral. Anyhow, from the valve, it goes into the left ventricle. And from the left ventricle, it passes through the aortic valve and out the aorta to the body's tissues. So I have written on that page, RR lungs, left, left tissue, because it goes right atrium, right ventricle, lungs, left atrium, left ventricle tissues. For me, that's an easy way to do it. I don't know if it'll help you or not, but I just thought I'd throw it out there for you. Now, the other piece of information that's handy is to understand the order that it passes through the valves. So, as we know from this diagram, the first valve it hits is the tricuspid, then the pulmonary valve, then the either bicuspid or mitral, depending on how you refer to it, and finally the aortic. And the, the way I remember that is for tricuspid, pulmonary, bicuspid, aorta, I use the mnemonic, the pig's big apple. 
So tricuspid is the, pulmonary is pig, bicuspid is big, aortic is apple. Similarly, if you want to call it the mitral valve, I, I remember the pig's massive apple. So I don't know if that will help you or not, but I will tell you, it actually helped me answer a question when I was testing once. Give you a second, a screenshot. All right, I have a video that is a really good illustration of how this process works. I understand that some systems won't allow you to hear the audio very clearly, but there's captions as the movie walks through, so I do want you to go ahead and watch this movie. And here we go. So I hope you like that. I think it's a really good video. And so I wanted to share it with you. Okay, let's talk about the major coronary arteries. If you don't already have this information isolated on your PCI pages, I would suggest you make some good notes while we go through this information. This is a good illustration of the coronary arteries of the heart, although the ramus, I have to say, you can just barely see it. It's on the back side of the heart and it's this real faint vessel that you can see. But the LD is how we, um, is the modifier for the left anterior descending. And that is this vessel over here. LC is the modifier that indicates left circumflex, excuse me, left circumflex. And that is over here. RC is the right coronary. This, these, of course, left and right, as always, refers to the patient's left and right, which is why you're looking at it on the left, but the patient's right coronary artery. The left main or the left coronary artery is over here. The ramus intermedius is that one on the back that I told you we can barely see. And then there are a number of branches that are recognized. The left anterior descending, or LD, has two diagonals. The left circumflex, which is abbreviated as, or modified as LC, two marginal. The right coronary has posterior descending and posterolaterals. There are no branches that are recognized from the left main, nor are there any branches recognized on the ramus intermediate. 
Okay, now when we're coding PCIs, let's get to the meat of the subject. Percutaneous coronary intervention or PCI, you probably already know this, but it's coded from the medicine section of the CPT manual. Appropriate coding of this section requires a thorough understanding of the codes and the guidelines that describe the codes. We report percutaneous revascularization services. These are services that are performed for occlusive disease of the coronary vessels. All right, let's go to page 666 in your manual. We're going to start going through these guidelines because I want to make sure you understand them. Okay, codes 92920 to 92944 describe percutaneous revascularization services performed for occlusive disease on the coronary vessels. That includes major coronary arteries, the coronary artery branches, or coronary artery bypass grafts. These PCI codes are built on progressive hierarchies with more intensive services inclusive of lesser intensive services. What does that mean? Do you understand what a um, progressive hierarchy means? It just means that as you get progressively more complex, the work for the complex code includes all of the work for the lesser, less complex codes. That's all. So these PCI codes include all the work of accessing and selectively catheterizing the vessel, transversing the lesion, radiological supervision and interpretation that is directly related to the intervention performed, closure of the arteriotomy when performed through the access sheet, and imaging performed to document completion of the intervention in addition to the interventions performed. Now these codes will include codes for angioplasty, remember that's from the video, that can be balloon, a cutting balloon, wired balloons, or cryoplasty. They also include atherectomy. Atherectomies can be directional, rotational, or laser, and it, they code for stenting. Again, those stents, you saw, that you saw a stent imposed during that video. Um, that can be a balloon expandable, a self-expanding, a bare metal, a drug eluding, or a covered stent. Each code in the family includes balloon angioplasty when performed. Now, diagnostic coronary angiography may be separately reported under very specific circumstances. You don't use those coronary angiography codes, which are 93454 to 93461, or the injection procedures. You do not report them for contrast injections, angiography, road mapping, and or fluoroscopic guidance for the coronary intervention, vessel measurement of the coronary intervention, or post-coronary angioplasty stent or atherectomy angiography, because all of that work is captured in the PCI revascularization services codes. Now, it can be performed, or sorry, it can be reported if that angiography performed at the time of the intervention, and the reasons you can report it is if, number one, there is no prior catheterization, um, catheter-based coronary, I'm sorry, I'm having a terrible time speaking. Let's stop for a second. Ms. Rochelle, this is slide 18. Can be so you can report it if there's no prior catheter-based coronary angiography available, <clears throat> and you need to do a full diagnostic study. And that study is the reason um, that they made the decision to intervene. Or if a prior study is available, but the medical records document, <clears throat> excuse me, that the patient's condition has changed since a prior study or if there's documentation that there's inadequate visualization of the, of, holy cow. Okay, this is, I think, the third run at slide 18, Ms. Rochelle. Oh, 
and of course the click came on. So I don't like that very much. I'm stopping again. Clearly this slide is hexed. <laughs> slide 18. If no prior catheter-based coronary angiography study is available and a full di diagnostic study is performed, and that study is um, the reason, the basis for the decision to intervene. Another reason that you can report it is if a prior study is available, but it's documented in the re medical record that either the patient's condition has changed or there's inadequate visualization of the anatomy and or pathology, or there's been a clinical change during the procedure that requires a new evaluation outside of the target area of intervention. If you've done the diagnostic coronary angiography at a separate session, that is of course separately reportable. So, okay, slide 18. If there's no prior catheterization, catheter-based coronary angiography study available, you do a full diagnostic study and a decision to intervene is based on that diagnostic angiography, you can report it. If there is a prior study available, but the medical record documents that either, there's like 412 on clicks on this stinking page. I know there's a lot. Poor Miss Rochelle. Her hair is going to turn white by the time I get through all this for her. I should have split this up better than I did. All right, starting again in five, four, three, two. Oh, I've been yata tying this whole time. Great. You can report it if no prior catheter based and uh, coronary angiography study. This past 400, I'd slide. 18, Miss Rochelle. Okay, so you can report it if there is no prior catheter-based coronary angiography study available. They have to have done a full diagnostic study. They need to perform that, that and then that study has to lead to the decision to intervene. The other reasons when you can report it is if a prior study is available, but the medical record documents that the patient's condition has changed as it relates to the clinical indications. You can also report it if there's if they document that there's inadequate visualization of either the anatomy or the pathology. And you can report it if there's a clinical change during the procedure that requires new evaluation, but that new evaluation needs to be outside the target area of the intervention. Of course, if they have done diagnostic coronary angiography at a separate session, not during the interventional procedure, that of course is separately reportable. So, let's talk about major coronary vessels and I want to make sure we talk about the HCPCS level 2 modifiers that correspond to these vessels because when you're doing PCI, you need to use these modifiers. The left main modifiers LM, left anterior descending modifier LD, left circumflex modifier LC, right coronary modifier RC, and ramus intermedius modifier RI. Remember that all PCI procedures that perf are performed in any of the segments of a single major coronary artery during a native, sorry, through a native coronary circulation those are only reported with one code, one code per vessel. If, however, the treatment, there's one treatment through the native circulation and treatment of another segment has to happen through a coronary artery bypass graft, the intervention through the bypass graft is separately reportable.
remember that. I have it highlighted in my book and underlined. I don't know if you want to do that, but it helps me to remember. Now, coronary artery branches. We recognize up to two coronary artery branches of the left anterior descending, left circumflex, which are called the marginals, and the right coronary, which is the posterior descending and posterior laterals. Those are what we recognize. As we said before, the left main and the ramus intermedius coronary arteries don't have recognized branches for reporting purposes for the PCIs. All PCIs performed in any segment, whether it be proximal, distal, or mid, of a coronary artery branch is reported with one code. You can report, <clears throat> yes? All right, I'll start again. Let me back up. If we do that again, I'll just say, I think somebody came off a of mute and keep going. All right. Okay, Ms. Rochelle, this is slide 18 still. Take 512. So you can report it if there's no prior catheter-based um, coronary angiography study available, but they have to have done a full diagnostic study and they have to base the decision to intervene on that diagnostic angiography. You can also report it if a prior study is available, but the medical record documents that the patient's condition has changed as it relates to the clinical indications, or if they document that there's inadequate visualization of either the anatomy and or the pathology involved. You can also do it if there's a clinical change during the procedure that requires new evaluation that is outside the target area of the intervention. Of course, diagnostic coronary angiography that is performed at a separate session outside the interventional procedure session, that is, of course, separately reportable. Now, let's talk about, I know that we showed a picture, but we're going to talk again about the major coronary arteries. We're also going to talk about the HIC-PIX level 2 modifiers that go with these arteries because with PCI, you need to use these modifiers to indicate what vessel is being worked on for what procedure. So for the left main, the modifier is LM. For the left anterior descending, it's LD. For the left circumflex, LC. For the right coronary, RC. For the ramus intermedius, RI. Remember that all PCI procedures that are performed in all the segments, whether it be proximal, mid, or distal of a single major coronary artery, if it's all done through native coronary circulation, you only report one code. However, if on that same coronary artery, you have to treat something and go through a coronary artery bypass graft, the intervention through the bypass graft is separately reported. So remember that, I keep it underlined personally, but you can underline, highlight, whatever helps you to remember that, knock yourself out. Okay, coronary artery branches. Up to two coronary artery branches of the left anterior descending, which are called the diagonals, the left circumflex, which are the marginals, and the right coronary, which are the posterior descending and the posterior laterals are recognized for PCI purposes. As we said earlier, the left main and the ramus intermedius, yeah, ramus intermedius coronary arteries do not have recognized branches for reporting purposes. All of the PCIs that are performed in any segment are reported with one code. You can report PCI codes for up to two branches of a major coronary artery. If the PCI is done on a third branch of the same coronary artery, it is not separately reportable. So you got a two code max on that. All right, coronary artery bypass graphs. Each of these bypass graphs represents a coronary vessel. 
So if you have a sequential bypass graft with more than one distal anastomosis, it still only rep represents one graft. If you have a branching bypass graft like a Y graft, that represents a coronary vessel for the main graft and each branch off of the main graft will constitute an additional coronary vessel. PCI performed on major coronary arteries or coronary artery branches by access through a bypass graft is reported using the bypass graft PCI codes. Remember that all bypass grafts uh, PCI codes include the use of coronary artery embolic protection devices when performed. Those are not separately reportable. Now, only one base code from this family can be reported for the revascularization of a major coronary artery. Sorry about that. And it's recognized branches. So only one base code should be reported for revascularization of a coronary artery bypass grafts, its subtended coronary artery, and the recognized branches of the subtended coronary artery. If a segment of a major coronary artery and its recognized branches are treated through the native circulation, and then there's treatment of another segment through a coronary artery bypass graft, you can use an additional base code re and report that. So they differentiate between native vessels and grafted vessels, and they can be separately coded. Okay, now your B PCI base codes are listed here, and the base code includes the, that includes the most intensive service provided for the target vessel is what the one that you need to report. You should be used to that. That's a basic premise in CBT coding that you code to the highest level, to the most complex code, all right? There is an intensity of service, meaning we talked about that earlier, the hierarchy. You always code to the most intense and they very kindly write out the hierarchy for you. It's right here in your book. 92943 is equal to 92941, which is also equal to 92933. All three of those are greater than 92924. 92924 is greater than 92937. 92937 is equal to 92928, and all of them are greater than 92920. So if you're in a testing situation and you have multiple procedures done and you see that one of the solutions has 92920 listed first, what does that mean? It means you can kick that answer to the curb immediately because they didn't code the most complex procedure first. Make sense, everybody? All right, good. Let's keep rolling. Now, here is a list. I like, I'm a list person. So the shorthand for 92943 is revascularization for total occlusion or basically a whole, a complete blockage. 92941 is revascularization at AMI. 92933 is atherectomy with stent with or without angioplasty. If you just have an atherectomy with or without angio, it's 92924. And revascularization through a bypass is 92937. A stent with or without angioplasty is coded to 92928. And plain old angioplasty, either balloon or PTCA, is 92920. If you want to screenshot that for your purposes, go ahead. I'll wait a second. And I'm going to keep on moving. Now, if you have PCI during a same session in additional recognized branches of the target vessel, there are um, add-on codes for that. And they follow the same principles we, as we, that we just discussed as far as hierarchies go. They give you those codes right here and it's highlighted. The next thing you need to know is if a single lesion extends from one target vessel, meaning either major coronary artery, coronary artery bypass graft, or coronary artery branch into another target vessel, but they can revascularize it, they can fix the problem with a single intervention that bridges both vessels. You report that with a single code, but you use both modifiers. 
The example they give is that if the left main coronary lesion extends in the proximal left circumflex coronary artery and a single stent is placed to treat the entire lesion, this PCI should be reported as a single vessel stent using code 92928. So you would not, since they only used one stent, you would not use this, the add-on code 92929. You would, however, um, use the modifiers for the vessels involved. In this case, left circumflex would be modifier LC and left main coronary is LM. Sorry, I lost my place and it took me a second there. If, however, a bifurcation lesion is treated, you report PCI for both of the vessels treated. So let's say the bifurcation leads lesion involves the left anterior descending artery and the first diagonal artery. Each of those vessels is stented, so you would use 92928 with an LD modifier and 92929 with, um, I'm blanking, sorry, with the appropriate modifier. Target vessel PCI for acute Myocardial infarction is inclusive of all balloon angi angioplasty, atherectomy, stenting, manual aspiration thrombectomy, distal protection, and intracoronary rheolytic agent administration performed. So all of those are bundled in. However, if they do a mechanical thrombectomy, they send that little rotor rooter in, you can report that separately. Chronic total occlusion. Now this is an important definition. In order for it to be chronic total occlusion, there has to be no anti-grade flow through the, through the lumen of the vessel, and it's accompanied by suggestive angiographic and clinical criteria. If there's, for instance, anti-grade bridging collaterals present, calcification of the occlusion site, no current presentation with ST elevation or Q-wave acute myocardial infarction attributed to the target lesion. If, however, current presentation with ST elevation or Q-wave acute myocardial infarction that's attributed, attributable to the occluded target vessel, there's a subtotal occlusion and occlusion with dye staining at the site is consistent with the fresh thrombus those are not considered chronic total occlusion. Chronic means long-term, total means complete occlusion. All right, so again, this is where you need to read carefully and forensically. Code 92973, that is the percutaneous transluminal coronary, coronary thrombectomy mechanical. 92974, which is coronary brachytherapy, and 92978 and 79, which is for intravascular ultrasound or optical coherence tomography, and 93571 and 93572, which are intravascular Doppler velocity and or pressure, um, fractional flow reserve or coronary flow reserve. Those are add-on codes for reporting procedures that are performed in addition to coronary and bypass diagnostic and interventional services, unless the um, code description has already included them in the base code. You cannot report non-mechanical aspiration thrombectomy with 92973. This uh, non-mechanical aspirational thrombectomy is included in the PCI code for an AMI. I'm sorry, I should put those little guys in for you. I'm behind on my clicks. Um, anyhow, 92973, the non... I'm stumbling and I do apologize. Non-mechanical aspirational thrombectomy is not reported with that code 92973, and it is, however, included in the PCI code for an AMI, the 92941 code, when it's performed. So remember, 92973 is only that little rotor rooter. It uses a type of catheter that mechanically fragments and removes the clots. If um, you have a catheter that aspirates the thrombus, but that doesn't actually like chew it up, 
you cannot report 92973. Now, if you're at coronary brachytherapy, remember that it doesn't include the dose calculation or the placement of the radio element. In order um, to code for intravascular radio element application, you need to see code 77770, 77771, and 77772. So now, I know that was a lot of information, but let's walk through a scenario together and then look at the applicable doc guidelines and start practicing how to implement this information. All right, a left main coronary lesion extends into the proximal left circumflex coronary artery and a single stent is placed to treat the entire lesion. What code should be reported? Well, you say to yourself, hmm. If we remember our guidelines, we're gonna code it as a single vessel stent. That goes to code 92928. How do I know that? Because on page 667, there's this paragraph that tells us, if a single lesion extends from one target vessel into another target vessel, but can be revascularized with a single intervention bridging the two vessels, this PCI should be recorded reported with a single code despite treating more than one vessel. Okay, so just remember, a single stent, it's reported with a single code. Um, the other thing to remember on that is when bifurcation lesions are treated, PCI is reported for both of the vessels that are treated. The example here is that when a bifurcation lesion involving the left anterior descending artery and the first diagonal artery are treated by stenting both vessels, 92928 and 92929 are both reported. All right, before we go into scenario coding, let's look at the actual code descriptions. Okay, this is basically just a copy of the, of, um, the page from your book. What I do, I like to be able to figure things out quickly. So I have PTCA written by 92920, atherectomy by 92924, stents, atherectomy with a scent, and then a, through a bypass. That way I can very quickly hone in on what part of the page I need to go to. As we carry on, um, 92941 is the acute myocardial infarction code. 92943 is used for total occlusions. Sorry. I don't like these on clicks, you guys. I'm gonna stop and fix them real quickly. Rochelle, I'm gonna go back no to slide 24. Ms. Rochelle, this is slide 23. Okay, I like to see things very quickly. So, against my code descriptors, I just write little brief indications of what they are. 92920 is a PTCA code. 92924 is for atherectomy. 92928 is for a stent or stents. 92933 is an atherectomy with stent. 92937 is when you have to go through a bypass. Next page, 92941 is the code you use when the patient is in the middle of an um, acute myocardial infarction. 92943 is the total occlusion code. 92973 is the mechanical thrombectomy. Brachytherapy therapy is 92974. Thrombolysis is 92975. 9978 is IVUS or OCT. Remember, these parenthetical guidelines, it tells you you can only report this once per session and it tells you what codes to use it with. You report 92979 once for each additional vessel. It also tells you that you need to only use 92979 with 92978. It can't, it's not a standalone code. 
And this one's important, intravascular ultrasound and optical coherence tomography services include all transducer manipulations and repositions within specific vessel being examined both before and after the therapeutic intervention. By therapeutic intervention, they mean whatever they're doing, stent placement, whatever. Okay? Now, I have some practice scenarios for you. The way we're going to do this is that a member of the team will read the solutions and the scenarios, and then we'll give two minutes to solve them. If you want to practice and participate, go ahead and solve them and put your answers in the chat. When the two minutes is up, I'll come back on and I'll walk you through solving the solutions or solving the scenarios. Um, if everybody's ready, I want to remind you first that you want to pay attention to which vessel is being treated, what procedures are being done. Remember, you use one code per treatment per vessel, unless there's a difference between native and bypass. And, except for those cases that we talked about a minute ago, diagnostic angiography is bundled. So if you're ready, Ms. Josie, would you read the first one for us, please? I'd be happy to. Okay, coders, here's your scenario. Okay, we, we're going to start with the answers first. Um, A is 92928. Okay, the recording. Ms. Rochelle, this is slide 27. Okay, coders, we're going to begin with the answers first. Here is A, 92928, modifier RC, 92928, LD, 92920, LC. B is 92928, modifier RC, 92929, LD, 92920, LC. C is 92933, RC. 92934 LD, 92934 LC, and D, 92928 RC, 9920 LD, 9920 LC. The scenario is intracoronary stents are placed percutaneously in the right coronary and left anterior descending arteries for a patient with stenosis. Percutaneous Transluminal balloon angioplasty is performed on the left circumflex coronary artery. Choose the correct CPT codes for this procedure. Coders, you have two minutes.
Thanks for reading that, Miss Josie. All right, coders, there are some great answers in the chat. You did quite well on it on this, and a lot of you knew the right answer. The correct solution here is A. Let's walk through it. Our important words, the things we need to know is that intercoronary stents, pure, percutaneously placed, right coronary, left anterior descending arteries, percutaneous transluminal angioplasty, left circumflex coronary artery. So what was done where? We had stents to the right coronary and left anterior descending, and we did an angioplasty on the left circumflex. So we need to find the appropriate codes for this. Remember, here is our hierarchy of coding. So looking at this, knowing that one is the most complex and seven is the least, we're gonna be looking for, um, sorry, we're gonna we're looking to make sure that we're, we've sequenced the most complex thing first. We can see that stents are higher and more complex than an angioplasty. So 92928, which right here it tells us, stent with or without angioplasty, we know that that ranks higher than a plain old angioplasty. So that looks like a good combination, 92928 and 92920 with 92928 sequence first. Now let's look at the full codes. Here's our list of what was done. We're looking for intercoronary stents and the percutaneous transluminal angioplasty. Let's take the odd man out, C92933. That is percutaneous transluminal coronary atherectomy. We don't have that documented at all. That means we can immediately eliminate C as a possible answer. Remember, here's your hierarchy. Keep that, um, have that in your book. Like if you can put it in the little empty spaces on the coding pages, wherever you need to, so that you make sure you're always sequencing things properly. If you look at the answers and can see that some that uh, one of the solutions has coded the more complex procedure in front of a more complex procedure, you know you can eliminate that answer because it's wrong. Okay, 92928, that is our stent code. We like that, and we're looking for RC and LD modifiers because they did it twice, right? Do you agree? A has, to, has it done twice. Hmm, B has 92928 and 92929. But look at 92929. That is for a branch of a major coronary artery. Are the right coronary and left anterior descending coronary arteries or are they branches? They're arteries. So we don't want to use 92929. So that means B is eliminated as a correct answer. We know we did stents on both of those two major arteries and we did an angioplasty on the left circumflex. So we should have two of the 92928 codes, one 92920. The only code, the only solution that has that sequence properly is A. So we can eliminate D and we verified that A is the answer. A lot of you got that correct and I think you should all pat yourselves on the back. All right, let's keep moving. We have a few more things to go through and we're running out of time. Okay, Miss um, Angela, would you please read this one for us? Sure. Okay, so here we have our answers. A, 92941LD, 92928LC, 92928RC, 92921LD, B, 92941LD, 92928LC, 92928RC, B, 92941LD, 92924LC, 92928RC, 92920LD, D, 92941LD, 
92924LC, 92925RC, and 92921LD. It's a lot of nines. A 57-year-old patient with total cor coronary artery occlusion arrives to the ED with an acute myocardial infarction. Percutaneous revascularization of the left anterior descending coronary artery was performed. Intracoronary stents were placed on the left circumflex and right coronary arteries. Angioplasty was carried out on the left di diagonal artery branch. What are the procedure codes for this encounter? Okay, coders, you guys have two minutes. Good luck. Okay, thanks, Miss Angela. Coders, your time is up. Let's start working through this. I am once again seeing, and this one's kind of tough. I think we've got some great answers in the chat. So let's start walking through this. The answer, just to relieve the suspense immediately, is A, 92941 with LD modifier, 92928 with an LC modifier, 92928 with an RC modifier, 92921 with an LD modifier. Your keywords, total coronary artery occlusion, acute myocardial infarction, percutaneous revascularization, left anterior descending coronary artery, intercoronary stents placed on the left circumflex and right coronary arteries, angioplasty, left diag diagonal artery branch. Okay, all of these start with the same code. Um, that is, actually, sorry, I would want to give a list of what happened here. We did percutaneous revascularization of the LD during an acute myocardial infarction. There's a stent on the LC, a stent on the RC, and angioplasty on the left diagonal branch. So those are the items we need to code for. Now remember, the diagonals belong to the left anterior descending artery. And we can code up to two coronary artery branches we only report one basic code for revascularization of a major coronary artery and its recognized branches only one base code should be reported for the revascularization of a coronary artery bypass graft blah 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 okay so the percutaneous revascularization of the ld during an ami that is one of the guidelines we need to adhere to. We need to pay attention that a target vessel PCI for an 
AMI is inclusive of all balloon angioplasty, atherectomy, stenting, manual aspiration thrombectomy, distal protection, and intracoronary rheolytic agent administration that's performed. It's important to remember that mechanical thrombectomy is reported separately. If PCI is performed during the same session on additional major, major coronary or an additional coronary artery bypass grafts are reported using applicable additional base codes. And PCI performed during the same session in additional artery, coronary artery branches should be reported using the add-on codes. Remember, this is all this applies if it is all in the same session. And in our situation, it is. Okay. As for the branch, it tells us we can report up to two. And if there was PCI in a third branch, we could not separately report it. But we don't have that situation, correct? Everybody with me? All right, good. Let me make sure every all the important words are highlighted. Let's look at 92941. That is the percutaneous transluminal revascularization um, during an AMI. And that is what we have documented. So we've verified the first code in all of our solutions. Now we're looking, two of these, the second code is 92928, and two of them, the second code is 92924. Well, 92924 is percutaneous transluminal coronary atherectomy which, if you look at your keywords, is not documented. We're looking for stents, right? And the code for that is 92928. So we can eliminate C and D because they have the wrong codes involved. Then, I keep um, myself and I apologize for that. Okay. We can report 92928 for a single major coronary artery branch, sorry, single major coronary artery or branch. So we haven't reported 92929 on any of these, and that is okay because we look at page 667. It tells us that we can code each. If we look for the angioplasty, we know that we can code it because that and 92920 is for a single artery or branch, but since we're talking about an additional branch after the first two arteries, we want to use 92921. We see that in solution A. It has our revascularization during AMI, it has both of the stent placements, and it has the angioplasty that was performed on the branch. Does that make sense to everybody? All right, good. Let's keep moving then, because it's getting late. Miss Josie, would you read this next one for us, please? I sure will. Okay, coders, here's your scenario. We'll begin with the answers first. A is 92924, modifier LD, 92925 LD, 92920 RC, B, 92928LD92928LC92920RC92924LC92924LD92920RC92920RC92920RC92920RC92920RC92920RC92920RC92920RC92920RC92920RC92920RC92920RC92920RC92920RC92920RC92920RC92920RC92920RC92920RC92920RC
arrives to the angiography suite for percutaneous coronary intervention. She will undergo stent placement on both le left circumflex and left anterior descending coronary arteries. Percutaneous balloon angioplasty is performed on the right coronary artery. What are the procedure codes for this encounter? Okay, coders, you have two minutes to solve. Wow, you guys are really good at this. Thanks, Ms. Josie, for reading that for us. Um, as most of you indicated in the chat, our answer is B, 92928LD, 92928LC, and 92920RC. Keywords, 37-year-old patient, percutaneous coronary intervention, stent placement, left circumflex, left anterior descending percutaneous balloon angioplasty, right coronary. So what are our procedure codes? <clears throat> well, first we want to look at the difference again at between 92924 and 92928 because those are the first codes listed. 92924 is for an atherectomy. 92928 is for a stent. Which do we have here? We have stent placements. That means that the atherectomy codes are incorrect and we can eliminate those two answers. How many arteries got stent placement? And did we use, are the less circumplex and left anterior descending, are those arteries or are they branches? You're right, they are arteries. So that means the branch code is incorrect. And if our guideline in 667 tells us that we can code both of those. Just to verify, 92920 is, oh, I'm sorry, I advanced too quickly. 92920 is the percutaneous transluminal angioplasty on a single major coronary artery or branch. That is what happened on the right coronary artery. So we have verified that B is the correct series of codes. And we know that stents are more complex than angioplasties. So these are sequenced properly also. Okay. Oh, I'm going backwards. Let me. Get to the next 
scenario. And Miss Angela, if you would please do the honors on this one, I would appreciate it. Of course. Okay, so we have our answers A, 92928LM, 92929LC, 92978 times 2, B, 92928LM, LC, 92978, 92979, 93454, C, 92928LM, 92928LC, 9344, 7536, 26, modifier 26, D, 92928LM, 9292LC, 9978-9979-93454, 75736 modifier 26. A 67 year old male patient arrives to the ED with chest pains. After a complete cardiovascular, cardiovascular workup, the patient was diagnosed with unstable angina pectoris by the ED physician. The patient was ambulated to the hospital angiography suite for further assessment and possible cardiac catheterization. By a left brachial approach, the catheter was placed into the aorta. Angiography confirmed severe stenosis of the left main coronary artery extending into the left circumflex. Additionally, intravascular ultrasound performed on both vessels confirmed the stenosis required immediate percutaneous coronary intervention. The physician was able to use a single stent to address the stenosis in both coronary vessels. What is or are the procedural codes for the professional service for the services in the angiography suite? Okay, coders, you guys got two minutes starting now. Okay. Once again, you guys are doing great. But I know not everybody feels comfortable sharing their answers, so we will walk through this. As most of you put in the chat, the answer here is B, 92928LMLC, 92978-92979-93454. Our keywords, 67-year-old male, Diagnosed with unstable angina pectoris. Angiography confirmed severe stenosis, left main coronary artery extending into the left circumflex. Intravascular ultrasound performed on both vessels. Percutaneous coronary intervention was required. It tells us the physician used a single stent to address the stenosis in both coronary vessels. So what are we gonna code? Well, remember, 
if the angiography is used to determine that surgery and intervention is necessary, we can code for it. That's an important thing. So we can code for the catheter place for the coronary angiography, or we know that what was happened here, catheter place for coronary angiography, IVUS was performed on both vessels. One stent was placed across the LM and LC. So here's our list. Let's look at the guidelines. Remember, the guidelines tell us that if a single lesion extends from one target vessel into another target vessel but can be revascularized with a single intervention bridging the two vessels, the PCI should be reported with a single code despite treating more than one vessel. So, let's look at 92928. That is the code for percutaneous transcatheter placement of intracoronary stents with coronary angioplasty when performed. That is the right code. Which modifiers do we want to apply, though? Hmm. We need a modifier for each of the two vessels, don't we? So right away, I'm in that is going to lead me towards thinking that B is my correct answer. But I'm going to keep looking at the other codes before. I don't want to cut off your nose to spite your face, you know. But that's a really good clue. Sometimes if you look at, that's why we read the answers first. Sometimes if you look at the modifiers, they can help you to eliminate bad codes or, you know, wrong codes. The codes aren't necessarily bad in and of themselves. Okay, so now we have to look at 92929 because that's an answer in D. Again, that codes for stents into an additional branch of a major coronary artery vessel, but our guideline told us we're only going to code for one stent, correct? So, we can eliminate the answers that have the 92929 in them. Let's look at, we could actually el eliminate C too, but we're going to look at the IVUS codes, 92928. We know that they performed IVUS. 92928 is for the initial vessel. It tells us that 92978 can only be reported once per session. Well, look at this answer in A. That parenthetical guideline means we can eliminate this, correct? Because we can't report that code twice. These are all clues that you can help to eliminate answers quickly and accurately. If we look at 9292. 79, that tells us that's the, the add-on code for each additional vessel. It tells us that we report it once per additional vessel and that we use it in conjunction with 92978. That means we can kick out our other two answers. We'd already eliminated C and we just the 92978 times two allows us to eliminate A. We know that we can record the angiography because it was um, used to determine the, the need for intervention. So 93554, which is catheter placement in coronary arteries for coronary angiography, that's a valid code. If we want to just be thorough and eliminate, look at 75736, which has, is included in the answers C and D. We see that's angiography pelvic. Did, did we use anything in the pelvic area? Is there any documentation that they went into that part of the body at all? No, there's not. So those are more reasons to eliminate C and D. All of these are clues. And if you read things carefully and think, apply your guidelines, you will be sure to code accurately and pretty quickly too. All right, we have some more practice. Ms. Josie, would you read this for us, please? Sure will. Okay, coders, here we go. A, 92928, modifier LD, 92929, LD, 93454. B, 92928, LD, 93454. C, 92928, LD, 
29LD-93454-75736, modifier 26, and D-92928LC, 92929 ld a 63-year-old female with coronary artery disease presents to the hospital's angiography suite for diagnostic coronary catheterization and possible intervention. Via left femoral artery approach, a catheter was placed into the aorta. A microcatheter was inserted to perform the angiography. Stenosis at the left anterior descending artery with bifurcation to the first diagonal artery was revealed. Both vessels were stented. What is or are the procedure codes for the professional services for this encounter? Okay, coders, you have two minutes. You may begin. Okay, time's up, coders. You, I think you guys have this down, Pat. You're doing really well. As indicated by most of you in the chat, the answer here is A, 92928LD, 92929LD, 93454. 63-year-old female, diagnostic coronary catheterization, possible intervention. Microcatheter inserted, perform the angiography. A stenosis at the left anterior descending artery with bifurcation to the first diagonal artery was revealed. Both vessels were stented. What is our, the procedure code or codes for the professional services for this encounter? Well, let's start looking around. We have a diagnostic coronary catheterization and angiography. We know that we had stenosis at the LAD with bifurcation of the first diagonal and that both vessels were stunted. So we know that the diagnostic angiography is performed if there's no prior angiography and they do the full study and they use that study to, dis to make the decision to intervene. So we are coded, we can code that, good to know. Let's look at 935, I'm sorry, 93454 as opposed to 75736. Those are two imaging codes. Well, once again, 75736, that's it, stinking 
pelvic angiography, which has nothing to do with our situation, right? Doesn't match any of our documentation, as opposed to 935, I'm sorry, 93454, which is our code for the catheter placement. So we can eliminate C because we know that the 75736 code is wrong. What do you think? What else can we see here? Well, we can eliminate D because they didn't code for the catheter placement. We can also eliminate B for the same reason. Actually, I jumped ahead. We know that when bifurcation lesions are treated, we report PCI for both vessels treated. B only gives us one intervention code and one imaging code. That's why B is wrong. A is the one that gives us both. 92928 and 92929, which is what our guideline directly tells us to code. That's excellent. And we eliminate B. Did everybody follow me? I think I jumbled that a little bit. All right, let's keep moving. We have a, another scenario or two. Miss Angela, I believe it's you. Um, it would be great if you would read this for us, please. Yes, not a problem. Okay, so we have our answers A, 92928RC, 92929LB, B, 92928RC, 92928LB, 92973C, 92928RC, 92929LB, 92973B, 9298RC, 92929LB, 92973RC. Through the femoral artery she uh, sheath, the catheter was advanced to the right coronary artery. A PT graphic wire was used to cross the lesion and angioplasty was performed. This resulted in only a fair result. So the decision was made to place a stent. Multiple attempts were made without success. While switching to a balloon for further ballooning, the patient became hypertensive and had difficulty in terms of her respiratory status. Angiography revealed an occlusion of the mid left interior descending and thrombus throughout the proximal left interior descending extending into the left main. Angiojet was used to sub suction out the proximal left interior descending thrombus. With the patient stabilized a 2.5 times nine milliliter millimeter, excuse me, zipper MX stent was placed in the left interior descending to a maximum inflation pressure of 14 atmospheres. The patient was sent to the coronary care unit in stable condition. Code for these procedures. Okay, coders, you guys got two minutes. Good luck.
right, Loader's time is up. Okay, what do we have going on here? Most of you, once again, slam dunked this in the chat, and the answer here is B, 92928 RC modifier, 92928 with an LD modifier, and 92973. Our keywords, femoral artery sheath, catheter advanced right coronary artery, angioplasty performed, they decided to place a stent. Sorry, my clicks are a little bit off. You know what? This is a little bit of a mess, guys. Let's, I'm going to stop. All right, coders, your time is up. Most of you have got this already in the chat, but just to be official, let me tell you that the answer here is B. 92928 with an RC modifier, 92928 with an LD modifier, and 92973. Our keywords, through femoral artery sheath, right coronary artery, angioplasty performed, decision to place a stent, Angiography revealed occlusion of the mid-left anterior descending and thrombus through the proximal left anterior descending, extending into the left main. Angiojet was used to suction out the proximal left anterior descending thrombus. Patient stabilized, stent was placed, left anterior descending. And we don't really care about the pressure just so you know, because it's just still a stent. So we know we did an angioplasty and stent. We know that we did a thrombectomy for the LAD, and we did a stent to the LAD. So let's look at page 660. It tells us that codes 92973, which is percutaneous transluminal coronary thrombectomy mechanical, 92974, 92978, 92979, 93571, and 93572 are add-on codes. These are for reporting procedures performed in addition to coronary and bypass graft diagnostic and intention, interventional services, unless, of course, they're included in the base code. Non-mechanical aspirational thrombectomy is not reported with 92973, and it's included in the PCI for acute myocardial infarction, which is code 92941, when that is performed. Do we have a situation with the AMI here? We do not. So that last part doesn't apply, correct? Let's look at 92973. That's our thrombectomy code. It tells us that we want to use it in conjunction with 92920, 24, 28, 33374143929753454393461935639365364 so we want to make sure that we're not cross coding it and it tells us that we don't report it for an aspirational thrombectomy well we have a we know it was done with the impeller, it tells us to use to destroy and remove the proximal left anterior descending thrombus, so we can code it. That is present in B, C, and D, so we like that. That means we can eliminate A because it did not code the thrombectomy. Now, we need to look at the angioplasty and stent. 92928 and 92929 are for the stent placement with coronary angioplasty on a single major coronary artery or branch. 92929 is the add-on code for each additional branch. Do we have branches here or arteries? We have arteries, right? So we don't want 92929 in our code. So that means we can eliminate C and D. Since the right coronary and left descending are major arteries, they each get their own code. That's how we got 
to B is the correct answer. Everybody following me? All right, good, 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 good. All right, I believe we have one more scenario to practice. Miss Josie, would you do this for, would you read this for us, please? I'd be happy to. Okay, coders, we're going to begin with the answers first. A is 92928, modifier RC 92978, B 92928, RC 92929, RC 92978, RC, D, sorry, C. 92928RC, 92978, modifier 51, modifier RC, D, 92924RC, 92925RC, 92978, modifier 51. Procedure with informed consent obtained, the patient was prepped and draped in the usual sterile fashion with the right groin area infiltrated with 2% xylocaine and the patient given a two milligram of Versed and 50 mcgs of fentanyl intravenously for conscious sedation and pain control. The French, six French catheter sheath from the diagnostic study was exchanged for a six French sheath and a six French JR4 catheter with side holes utilized. The patient initially received 3,000 units of IV heparin and then IVUS interrogation was carried out using the Atlantis Boston scientific probe. After it had been determined that there was a significant stenosis in the osteoproximal segment of the right coronary artery, the patient received an additional 3,000 units of IV heparin as well as integralin per double bolus injection. A 3.0 millimeter long taxa stent was then deployed in the osteum and proximal segment of the right coronary artery in a primary stenting procedure with inflation pressures up to 12 atmospheres applied. Final angiographic doc documentation was carried out and then the guiding catheter pulled the sheath upgraded to a seven French system because some diffuse oozing around the six French size sheath and the patient is now being transferred to telemetry for post-coronary intervention, observation, and care. Okay, coders, you have three minutes on this one. Good luck.
Okay, we gave you a little bit extra time on that one because there's a lot of language here and sometimes people look at a wordy scenario and they kind of see a word salad. It takes a minute to figure out exactly what you're looking at. So most of you did a really good job and correctly said that A is the correct answer. Let's look at our keywords. We know that a catheter was used for the diagnostic study. Ivus inter-irrigation was carried out. We know that there is stenosis in the right coronary artery and that um, the proximal segment of the right coronary artery was, was had a stenting procedure performed on it. So we're looking for IVUS. That's what this language tells us. The French sheath. I'm sorry, this slid. All right, guys, I need to fix this. It slid again. I'm stopping. Ms. Rochelle, we're on slide 51 at the end of the three-minute time. Good job, coders. Once again, we got great answers in the chat, and most of you selected A as the answer, which is absolutely correct. Let's walk through and see why. Our keywords, we know a sheath was introduced and IVUS interrogation was carried out. From the IVUS interrogation, it was determined that it, um, intervention was needed and a stenting procedure was performed. So they did then a final angiographic documentation. So what we're coding for is the IVUS and the stent. Let's look at the IVUS. I'm sorry, let's look at the stent first. 92928, as we've seen repeatedly tonight, is placement of intracoronary stent or stents. How many um, stents got placed here, coders? Right, we did one stent. So that means we can eliminate C because that has a couple of stents placed. I'm sorry, because it doesn't have, oh, gosh, I'm screwing this up. Let me stop. Stopping again, sorry, Ms. Rochelle. Okay, Ms. Rochelle, we're starting at the end of the three minute answering block. I'm on slide 51. Wow, coders, your time is up and you once again did a terrific job. Most of you indicated the correct answer, which is A, 92828 with an RC modifier, 92978. We know that they used a French catheter sheath, that they did IVUS interrogation, that they found significant stenosis in the right coronary artery. They decided to do a stenting procedure. And then they did final angiographic documentation. So what we're coding for here is the IVUS procedure and a stent to the RC. Is there anything, looking at this, is there anything you can eliminate right off the bat? Remember I talked about looking at modifiers to see if any of them were clearly wrong? Well, 92978 is an add-on code. Do we use modifier 51 with add-on codes? We do not. Therefore, I'll tell you right now, I would probably eliminate C and D on site. I would verify it but I would probably eliminate it on site. But let's go through and officially look at our codes here. First, we're going to look at the stent code. 92928 is the percutaneous transcatheter placement of intracoronary stent or stents. That's a valid code. Do we need to code more than one stent placement? No, we do not. Therefore, the B, which includes 92929 for a branch, that's not valid. We can eliminate B. How about 92978C? There's that add-on code. That's for the IVUS. 
as I mentioned a minute ago, because of the modifier 51, we can eliminate C and D. We know we can eliminate B because we do not need to code for an additional branch of a coronary artery because only one vessel was stunted. Therefore, we're going to eliminate B. We have looked at these codes and verified. Oops, excuse me. We have looked at these codes and verified that we have the right answer. And since I already popped it quickly, I'll say it again. I want to thank you for attending tonight. I want to thank the team who did a terrific job, Miss Angela and Miss Josie. This ends our presentation. I thank you for your attendance. <laughs>